So, hi all, hi guys. Here we are in this uh, beautiful surrounding. We are uh, in the central France, Etang de la Livardière. Um, very, very beautiful lake. It's a uh, uh, old gravel pit inside a uh, very big estate property. Uh, I teamed up together with the other guys of the team, Rick, Tony and Felix, uh, to actually doing our video as we do every year, but mostly to do the last check and test on uh, many new products like the new rod I'm using now, new swingers, rod pod and most important of everything, uh, all the last meter range. We have new hooks, new hook links, all the accessories to test and um, I cannot ask for a better place than this because you see it's a really big water, it's around 40 hectares uh, lake and it's just full of weed so we have pretty tough condition actually going on for the whole week but uh, for sure will be a good test. After this, I think we are ready to go. So, after my first run on the boat, my rods are just in place now. I fish in three totally different spots and uh, we will do our best in the next days. We'll keep you updated on uh, what is going on and especially at the end of the week, we will see how all the last meter range will react to this uh, tough fishing condition. Stay tuned.
Okay, so uh, here we are, a true team effort this <laughs> yes. one, Enrico. Uh, basically, I got caught short, call of nature, uh, and Enrico's literally five yards away from me. And we're fishing on a point back to back, so I said to Enrico, just watch my rods, buddy, and uh, no sooner was I up there in the toilets, and uh, well, the rod screamed off. And, and I had uh, the lucky to enjoy the first fish. Yeah, definitely. The fight of the first fish of the, of the trip. So, uh, so thanks now. ever so much for that, Enrico. It's a stunning fish, and hopefully, that was my fun. That was my pleasure. <laughs> hopefully, this is going to be the first one I met. Yeah. So yeah, what a gorgeous fish. Well, this is the uh, second one from the baited spot, basically where I did my fish yesterday. Um, I was having a call on nature and my good friend Enrico picked my rods up for me, so we got the rods back out yesterday and got woken up with this one this morning. I also had one in the night on the long range uh, island rod and uh, we'll have a look at that one shortly, but uh, what a way to get woken up in the morning. It's stunning. French common cab.
Okay, so this is uh, my wake-up call, literally at first light this morning, uh, on the rod that I boated out to the island. I mean, this one is probably 200 and 260 yards out. <coughs> There's a nice overhanging tree off the island, so I rode, rode it out last night. Basically, dropped the rig. I found a lovely gravel clear spot, and uh, maybe I don't know half a kilo of boilies over the top. So this is one of my rewards for the effort of that one, and. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't wake the other guys up this morning to give me a hand. Uh, we'd been travelling so much for the past two, three days, and it took its toll. But um, so, lucky enough, with a new last meter lead clip, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It dumped the lead on the on uh, the take, and the fish stayed on the surface all the way in, 260 yards. So it's uh, stayed above the weed, and uh, yeah, very welcomed, very welcomed. So we're going to get this little chap back, and uh, we'll get the rods back out. guys so this is uh, Enrico swim I'm fishing pack number seven together with Rick uh, I'm fishing the left side of Rick and I'm actually the, the last one on the left between all of us uh, four you see I have a pretty open space in front of me but actually it's not really open because I have solid weed till uh, 80 meters out and um, as I was showing previously I'm fishing just purely with 20 millimeters pop-up and a big stick of uh, crushed boily just to be sure that it arrive on the bottom safe without being tangled on the on the weed. The only thing different I'm doing from all the other guys with my left rod, I can reach a pretty deep area, which is around 2.2, 2.4 meter, uh, which is a clean area with weed all around. And I fish with a zig rig over there. I had a I had a sturgeon last night biting on a. It was not faulty hooked. <laughs> he he been biting on the on the zig. Uh, so I decided, and I had also two more bites on this on this rod. So I decided to keep going on and keep on trying. Uh, but yeah, as you see, this island over there is actually dividing my swim to Rick's swim, and I have a rod just beside, just on the left side on the island is in less than a, one meter of water, and then one in front of me. Uh, I found some clear spot previously but the problem is that I found out this morning when I was out with uh, with my boat that, that the, uh, the weed is moving now probably it's because now the temperature is cooling down it's almost the end of the season and the spot that I marked yesterday and two days ago that was clean it was just solid weed today so uh, before tonight I am gonna gonna recast the rod the middle rod the middle rod and uh, I see what to do probably I will just have to find a brand new spot but so far we had activity i had a really good mirror carp last night rick had some good fish so yeah all is good we try our best
happen. I left the swim for a few minutes for some natural reason, <laughs> let's say. And uh, but luckily Tony was taking care of my rod, so we had a good run on the rod fishing just in front of the swim in a very shallow area on a single 20 millimeters pop up. And Tony luckily enjoyed the fight. I didn't feel too guilty because I helped you put the rod out. No, that's fine. So. <laughs> we, we are a team. We are yeah, a team that's anyway. It's all team, yeah. So stunning some, fight, good fight. Let's get some picture together. I'm and then put it back in the water. You see three rods. That was yeah. one good fight. Really enjoyed that. It was great. Beautiful fish. Thank you. You're very welcome. Man. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs>
few fish out moments ago and we've got those waiting in the landing nets for your uh, salvo to photograph so uh, should we have a look at the Let's fish? Get in with that. Okay. Yeah, no worries. one caught using the new last meter terminal range the XC7 hooks tipped off with uh, one of my favorites the trusty baits white pop-up and a crab boilie uh, and the new last meter lead clip discharging the lead on the take allowed me to play this fish and enjoy the fight all the way to the bank from over 260 yards away and uh, wow what a fish what a fish and to be caught this time in the morning I don't care if I don't catch another fish today. Okay, this is uh, one little thing that I've been uh, doing to my bed baits. Basically, you know, it might be a little edge, I don't know, but it seems to be working and it's putting me fish on the bank. Um, within 24 hours of fishing here, you know, I was aware that uh, there was a few crayfish in here and they were nipping away at the baits. Um, so straight away, I've got my fresh freezer bait out. I've been drying it out in the sun, and uh, it's at the stage now where it's just about, it's just starting to release all the salts and stuff like that, but it's it's already quite hard. You know, I cannot break these with my fingers anymore. Um, so to make them more appealing, and obviously for baiting up and stuff like that, what I tend to do is uh, I take one of the glugs. Now this is a glycerol based uh, glug. Basically I'm gonna give all the baits a nice coating, not absolutely soak them, but coated so they're all just like wet to touch. And then I'm gonna add a, a really good high quality food oil as well. Uh, this is one of the fish oils, the amino oils from ProLogic. Um, and basically I'll leave that in there on the baits because they're already dehydrated. They're going to take this back in already hard and it makes them, especially with the glycerol in the bait soak, it's going to make them a lot tougher and less resilient for the craze. So all we do is give them the baits a general good lashing of this. And a bit of the oil as well. Give it a good stir around. So as you can see there, they're not absolutely swimming in the liquid. They've just had a wet, wet glug coat. And that's all that you're looking for is, it, is that the looking 
almost wet to touch and for the day I'll just leave those in there from time to time I'll give them a quick stir around and eventually by the time to come bait it up this afternoon the boilers will have taken all that back in and it makes them more appealing and obviously when they're out in the lake this is the first food signals that's coming off the bait so they're starting to release the flavours into the swim already and with the oils you know should a fish disturb, disturb the baits I'll get a good oil leakage as well so if a fish is passing over the top you know they're going to pick up on the oils and hopefully home in on my hook bait down at the bottom just one little edge but it seems to be working for me here As you can see, uh, Henry's into a fine fish. Now the thing is with this lake, it's quite weedy and it has weeded him up. So he's going out to see it. We had to take precautions there and make sure he got his life jacket on. But uh, Henry's quite experienced at uh, doing this sort of thing. They do this style of fishing by about a quite a lot across Europe. All right. Wow. <laughs> Oh, look at this. <laughs> Chunk. So this was the result of my last trip with the boat. I had a nice ride during the night. Short but very intense fight. This fish was caught on a single 20 millimeters pop-up in a, just a bit more than a meter depth in a very hard bottom surrounded all over from big weed beds. It's the second fish actually, the second run this day, yeah. today, in that place. On that rod. And I really cannot ask for any yeah. better. Look at this fish. Yeah, it's been tricky going on it, Henry, and to be fair, two runs, you know, uh, especially one in the day, because be everyone, everyone else is not catching during the day, Oof. unless it's early morning. What a fish. It's just pristine, it's yeah. perfect. It is. Look at this. But you said the new XC7 again? Yeah. You know, and it's, a combi link? Uh, yeah. Well, this, this is what it's about, mate. This is this is why we're testing, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, getting a fish like this out of so many weed, you know, is uh, just a perfect hook hold. No damage on the mouth. It was just on the bottom jaw. Perfect. Cannot really ask for any better. Beautiful. This fish already made my week. Yeah. You I used for this last catch and actually even for the previous one it's just one of the new our new lead clip with a pin to block the lead but I normally just fit the very first two millimeters so very easy to lose the lead Kobe link XC7 hook just a smaller size because these are size 2 I'm doing size 4 now with a blowback system and a shrink tube and then just a single 20 millimeters pop-up And to be sure it doesn't get everything ruined by the weed. I always 
just put a big stick that I prepared previously. The banana. And for this is very easy. A quick change swivel. Just have to remove the sleeve for a second. And what I do is I have the tungsten putty here and just fix the hook. Just have to put back the anti-tangle sleeve. Voila. Just put the lead. Enrico's just had the fish and uh, he's taking his rod back out and while he is positioning his, his other rod then uh, this one's screamed off so I've uh, happily picked it up for him just waiting for him to get back now so we can take over At the end of the day it is Enrico's fish Thank you Rick So I've just got it under control you for just, you uh, You can just hand me the, the landing net Then go straight with the out of the boat Because of that, you saw the wall of. Oh, landing it, landing I'm just sorry because it would have been cool for the camera. Yeah. I never seen a sturgeon caught on a zig. Okay. And it was not fault hooked. I saw it came on the surface, it was yeah. just stuck into the weed. Then I managed to get it on the surface and it was just properly hooked on the side. And then yeah. it just started and then it went on a, on a tree, on a hanging tree on the water. And then I hold it, but then. I was a little bit, you know, dancing on the boat, and then the, actually I don't know if he have just snapped the line or just the hook pull. This I still don't know. Oh, I snapped the yeah, line. No, you zigzag. You can see it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Still there. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah, would have been cool. <laughs> yeah, Sturgeon on a zig. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I normally used to catch strange stuff on a zig. You remember in Czech Republic? Yeah, I do remember, mate. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, a, uh, a nearly, nearly leather carp, if it's not for 
one, two, three, four scales down on its tail there. Again caught using uh, the new last meter terminal range, the awesome XC7 hook. This is my uh, long range rod off the island, over 200 yards away, and uh, took my snowman presentation. A lovely conditioned, nearly a lever. Absolutely stunning fish. So we'll get this one back and uh, see if we can get that rod back out and catch some more. team, uh, Felix, Enrico and uh, Rick Johnson and myself. Um, I've moved spots because um, the fish don't seem to be playing ball closer in. I've, I've seen some fish right across the other side of the lake and what I want to do is I'll just go through the rigs and the rig changes I've made. And the one thing with um, we've changed in the last meter, we've got um, a new range of last meter products coming out for 2016 and part of the range is we've got um, products coming out. Now I'm not a fan of chods I'm more of a supple hinge rig. In one degree, people say it is a chub because you're using the same boom. Um, and also, I use an XC2 hook. Um, I find it sits more aggressively. Um, so what I'll do is I'll tie the rig and show you, and then you can make up your own mind. It's just one of those things. And a lot of people say, well, how are you going to get stiff filament through the eye because it's only a small eye? And I'll show you a little neat little trick which someone showed me, a very good friend of mine showed me, um, how to get it through. You only have to go through twice, and you can use any hook of your choice then, really, if you've got a preference. So I'll tie that rig and show you the rig now. But what I'll quickly show you is the difference between, the, obviously, the two hooks, the chod hook and the thing. So obviously, that's the XC2, long shank, and that's a chod wide gape. But what I find with this is there's more hooks showing on the rig with the pop-up above. Um, and I say, you'll, you'll notice it once I've tied the rig. Right, in the range as well, we've obviously got some um, super stiff um, filament. With this stuff, I find it's got fantastic memory. Um, I've been using it for a while. And with steaming at an angle, even steaming a loop on it and casting a bag out, I still find it keeps its shape. Which to me, a lot of the time I've been using other, um, other company stuff and it seems to straighten out. And there's been a lot of development gone into this and I say I'm over, over the moon with it. What I'll do is I'll use the 26 because um, it's quite weedy out there and um, even though it's a short boom, I still want it to be quite abrasive resistance. Is it right? I need these, otherwise we won't be able to see the rig very well. Right, so what you do is grab the hook, grab the stiff filament and hold it along the shank of the hook. Lay it across the top, pinch it with the other two fingers, bring it down. Then what you do is you go four turns up the shank towards the eye, trap in the other mono underneath and then back through the loop you created. Then moisten it and just pull that down and what I'll do is pull the knot down. And what you've got is a little bit knot on there and that through there. So what you do then so you cut this, you don't need too much, it's only a short rig, and place that through the eye. And pull the knot down, just pull it up tight, so it sits like that. What I do is cut that off at a little angle, it just helps it thread through. Now, Preference for a lot of people, some people use bait screws, I use swivels. Great thing with that, I can tie whatever size bait on whether I want. Double bait, single bait, half and half, you can use whatever you want. You pull that tag down and just slot it through the eye again. So with that little slant on it, it goes through very easily. Let's pull it down 
and create yourself a little D. You don't want it too big, just enough because you really want the bait to sit over the back of the hook. So you've got as much hook showing as possible. And hold that off. Cut off, you leave a couple of mil. And get your light, obviously be careful doing this. And just burn the tag end over and then just melt it down. So they have your D. And obviously that will blow the boilie back. Now this is the fiddly bit now. Get yourselves a uh, size 8 swivel. And the great thing I found with this, um, with the company's uh, pop-ups I use, um, is that this balances out a 14 mil boilie perfectly pop-up. But I'm not a fan of long section. It's about an inch and a half down. And I just do an overhand knot. Obviously being a stiff material, absolutely fine. Put the big ring through. So this is the fiddliest part of it. Just teasing it all through. And you want a little bit of a loop. With a, you don't want it tight down on the swivel. You want a little bit of a loop. It just helps the whole rig move around. Just pull that down tight. Snip off the tag end. Leave a couple of mil again. My own preference, I do actually just burn it over. Just open up that little loop a little bit. Just let the swivel move around. So, and the way that rig will sit will be like that. A lot of hook showing. Bit of interest on a rod. <laughs> so it will literally sit like that. So there's a lot of hook showing with the pop above here. And you think a lot of time the fish come from above, it's a very aggressive hook. And I find, I find with the chod hook, it seems to sit up a bit more like that where this just hangs down. Right, we go on to the boom section. Now I'm using the, um, it's new for the different color for the range. Two-tone, dark brown and light brown. It's, um, find it blends in, especially with a uh, we've got out here, it's quite a sandy bottom on the lake. Same thing, I don't commit myself to cutting the length off until I've actually tied it on here. And this is just a, a four turn grinner. You don't have to double through, it's 25 pound this is. And with a stiff coating, it just kicks it away all the time. Four turns through. Bit of spit just to tease it down. Up tight. Cut the tag end off. And this is your own preference of however you want to do, depending on what you're setting up. I'm not using, we're on quite a hard bottom here, so I don't need it too long. I think with this is just tie a figure of eight. So once, twice, and using a bait and it just makes it so much easier just to pull through and you can see it's a figure of eight. Just pull that up tight, that'll just stop it pinching the material. And the vice tying that now, I'm not wasting too much of them hook length material. Just run your fingers down that to straighten it out. Now that's rig, and I'll just show you a couple of baits on it just to finish it off. Just so you can see how aggressive that's, that hook is. And obviously, if you're using a bigger pop up, just put a little bit of putty on that knot because you want all that movement. That's the one thing. If you start putting putty on here, you restrict the movement. You want the putty there, 
it's something to hold on to the knot as well. And this rig can be used as a wafter or a pop-up. Just lately I've been using it more as a wafter for me. Especially in the UK I use half and half, half a bottom bait, half a pop-up. It's just I have a lot more fish that way for some reason. So use anything you want just to tie on, dental floss. Just pull that through and what I'll do is I'll actually pull the boilie onto onto that swivel just to push it down so it sits like that. Just a quick overhand knot. Bait stop. Burn over those tag ends. And that's the regular. So a lot of the time. I prefer it sitting like that. So as soon as the fish picks it up, that hook sats down. People fish it like that. Let's say at the moment I'm fishing it, most of the time I'm fishing it, it's like wafter style. So it'll sit like that. And I say as soon as that picks up, that is a very aggressive hook. Okay, it's uh, come to that quiet part of the day, mid-afternoon now, so we're going to go uh, talk a few rig bits and, and stuff like that and what, what we're doing. Um, now basically we arrived at the lake to find out that um, this year there's been an amazing weed growth in the lake. Um, so it's we've had to change our, our plan that we had of the lake from information that we received, talking to other anglers, you know, and trying to get the uh, lowdown on what's going on on the lake. But this year it's been extremely difficult. So... All our plans of fishing these nice clean gravel spots have gone out the window to be fair and uh, we've had to adapt our style of fishing to do it. Now um, I've been lucky enough to catch a few fish already so we'll go through some of the rigs that I've been using, uh, this one in particular, and um, tell you about some of, the, some of the components that we're using. So basically what I'm fishing is, if you like, a chod style rig uh, but basically on a supple hinge boom. So basically I can still fish this with a lead clip which is allowing me to drop the lead instantly and fish safe. So we'll start from the from the top. This is an, one of the new, um, this is the XC8 with the outturned eye. A really good, strong, very, very, very sharp hook. Um, this is connected to our um, Pro Chod Mono uh, which is fantastic, a, a, extremely low diameter. In fact, the one I'm using at the moment is um, 33 pound braking strain and it comes in at 0.53 um, so it still goes for, able to get it through a size 6 hook three times through the eye to form that um, D-ring D if you like on the back of the hook there and that's connected to one of our new uh, chod swivels again an oversized swivel but kept very very small and um, very strong and that's connected to basically the boom section which is a soft woven braid uh, which is our super snake. Now this is, again is 25 pound braking strain so um, really tough strong gear here I'm using here to uh, deal with the ring and then at the end of that it's connected to one of our uh, small rig loops so I can change rigs quite easily um, and if you like rig the changes keep swapping about baits and stuff like that to see what's working um, and, and that's it now this has been successful for me basically uh, the hinged stiff rig if you like but made with a soft supple boom section using our super super snake now I'm using that because uh, again the, it's not that the bottom's choddy it's a, that the finding clear patches is very hard and what we're finding there's places where there's not so much weed 
and places where there's a lot of weeds so we're chucking in the places where there's not so much weed and the idea is with this being soft and supple the midsection I can balance this bait out my lead's going through the weed and basically this comes down and the super snake is a sinking braid but it's a woven tough braid so that's going to come down and sit nicely on top of the weed taking on the contours of the weed and stuff like that and it's a very very nice presentation to be fair and one that's been working um, yeah and that's tipped off one of my uh, white crab trusty baits pop-ups and to be fair it's putting fish on the bank so uh, look out for these new products this year coming out tried and tested and these have been putting fish on the bank for me <laughs> XC7 again, found it's home in the bottom jaw. It's worth having a look at uh, the new lead clips as well. You can see that's uh, every fish, well the past two few fish that I've had now, dumped the lead on every, every take, which is really important when we're fishing in uh, places like this. And it's enabled me, you know, so, to be fair with the fish that I've had so far, I'm not having to use a boat to go out and land them because of the lead clip. The lead clip's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Don't get me wrong, you know, as a normal fisherman, I don't want to lose a, lose the lead. Um, but in situations like this, given the rewards that are there, chance of landing a fish or losing that lead, hey, I'll lose a lead every day for a fish like that. <laughs> yesterday fishing with a zig uh, that area of the lake is pretty it's pretty deep it's like 2.3 2.4 meters and uh, it's a pretty wide clean area 
surrounded by weed all around. Uh, I've been just uh, out probating with a bit more ground bait and uh, pellet just to create a bit more cloud and of course still with some boilies because probably I will try again later today or tomorrow to fish with a normal uh, rig. But for today, uh, it's good sun, it's a little bit of wind, so I think it would make sense to try again with a zig. Of course, I made a zig with a pretty oversized floor carbon. This is our Spectrum 37 pound in 050 millimeters, which is not really what you use normally for a zig. But there is simply too many weed out there, and I really don't want to risk to leave my hook in the mouth of a fish swimming around the lake. So, better be safe than sorry. Okay, so uh, here we are is the result of uh, the almost double run. As soon as I'd uh, got one fish in the net, the other rod went. And to be fair, Felix, I have the, you to thank for this. Um, couldn't the story show me and Felix were discussing last night rigs and presentations. And Felix told me about uh, a setup he's been using all across Europe to having some good success. So uh, I managed to steal one of his rigs last night. and. Uh, Thank you very much, Felix. It resulted well, in this fish. So uh, please tell us about uh, your li little setup there that seems to be working. Well, the thing I'm using is uh, the reptilian hook link and uh, the XA5 hook with a liner liner and an anti-tangle sleeve out of the Prologic last meter range. Uh, it's a rig I've been using like for several years to set up. And like last month, I was fishing in three different countries as well in France, in Serbia, and in Holland, catching everywhere, catching early spring. It's a setup for me, it works with a sinking boldly or a snowman presentation. And I gave Rick one, sometimes you have to get uh, lost of your religion, and that's what Rick did, and it resulted in this lovely comment. So a uh, cracking fish and thank you very much to Felix. You're and, welcome. Uh, a, You're rig welcome. That, a very simple rig that's been working all over Europe, so why not try it? Hi, welcome in France. I'm uh, Felix van der Madel, the Dutch consultant for ProLogic. Uh, we are filming here for our new products for 2016. Uh, I'm together with uh, Enrico, a product manager, and two guys from the UK, Tony and Rick. Uh, well, the thing is we are fishing over here. I'm fishing in this swim. Uh, lots of weed, fishing on a distance, uh, on the other side. Uh, like 100 meters, 120 meters, already got a bite, but I lost it in the weed. There's a lot of weed, as I can show you. Got a bunch out yesterday, and uh, it's a tricky venue, but uh, we already managed to get fish, so uh, we're gonna show you how, and uh, I'm gonna show you one of my rigs, and uh, I will explain that step for step. Well, on venues like these, I like to try out new things because uh, there is a lot of pressure and sometimes weird things will work out well. So the thing is, I got a setup to make a maggot clip rig and uh, I will show you step for step what I'm using. First I got the anti-tangle uh, sleeves on the rig. I got the maggot clip. Uh, these are available in uh, different sizes, small one, medium one, and a large one. I'm gonna use the large one. Got a set of swivels, uh, size 8, mini tail rubbers. Uh, it depends, you can use the mini tail rubbers 
or the anti-tangle rubbers as I said before. But my favorite hook, the XA5 in size 4. Reptilian brand, so I can make a combi rig. And the maggots in white and in red with some kind of glitter in it. You see you got the small ones and the big ones, so you can play with that. And that's the whole setup. I'm gonna show you now how it's working step by step. Starting with the reptilian. Just gonna take a piece out like 30, 40 centimeters. Double strip to half. As you see, it's very tough. So I got the tough part and the super part. It's gonna make a small loop for the hair. And we don't use a stopper because we put the maggot ring into the hair. Just a small one. Bit of moist. Cut off this section. I'm going to take the XA5 hook in size 4. I'm just going to make a simple rig, combi rig. But I put the loop all up the way to the eye. So it's just getting out of the curve. A few twists. I prefer six, seven, eight. Get it back through. Pull it tight. Well. As you can see, it's a little loop. But, and I attach the maggot ring under it. So I still got a bit of space left between the hook and the maggot clip. I think I need that because if it's too close, it won't hook properly. I do that same with Bowley, so it works. So I never change a, a winning tactic. On the other hand I also make a loop. This way you can choose to attach it to the main line to the LED system, cut it off. So you can uh, attach it loop to loop or you can use a swivel, again swivel goes through it, back to the loop. You can attach it like this in a LED clip or in an inline LED. So we've got a setup. That's one. I'm gonna leave that here. As you can see, I don't use the anti tangle rubber or the little sleeve. You can do that if you want to, if you've got a more uh, supple uh, uh, rig material. But because this is combi rig, it's very stiff here, so I don't use it, I don't need it. It's tough enough, it's resistant enough. So, got the maggot clip, open it. Of course we are now using plastic maggots. Just slice them up. You can combine it, of course, with live maggots as well. Okay, you can see the ring, full maggot clip, white and red ones. Gonna attach it to the rig right now. Just 
organize them a bit that the maggot clip is really full and there you got it you can put a little uh, uh, pop-up led of course here because they will come up that's the thing you can also uh, fish it with a shorter rig straight from the lead and it looks very attractive simple but it's working well so give it a try if a regular bait doesn't work uh, in the last meter range there are all as well uh, ready rigs so if you're not a rig man and you don't uh, cut the experience or whatever you can choose from our ready rigs they are perfect they are tied very well quality top quality and this is one the stiff d-rig in a mirage 3d camo it's 15 centimeters and you can use this as well it's a like a d-rig with a ring and you can use this as well for the maggot clip i'm going to show you now uh, how it looks when it's attached so just pull it out I already took one out take the ring put the maggot clip on close it and then you got it like this it's way aggressive Absolute perfect hook hold for the XC7 hooks straight in the middle of that bottom jaw. And that's the reptilian coated braid to one of our new safe clips with a locking pin so it discharges the lead straight away. And the combination of all those little pieces come together to put this little chap on the bank. But basically a bit of tungsten putty on the soft hinge bit. So as soon as the fish picks that up you can see it's very aggressive from any angle. And that little bit of weight is going to make that hip hook kick down into that bottom jaw. And then basically another piece just past halfway. So again if my rig landed like that on the bottom the weight of that is going to fold everything flat. So even if my rig's not out straight just keeps everything pinned down to the bottom. And it seems to be the rig that's been doing the business for me.
So I will just help Rick putting his rod back out. I got a strange run. And this is beautiful animal anyway. Of course it's not what we are after but it was a hell of a good fight to be honest. So I'm more than happy with this. So we are just uh, approaching the last night of this uh, French adventure. It has been uh, a great week. Time has been running fast, a little bit too much actually. Too fast. Too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Felix has left today because he had some uh, other duty at home. So unfortunately he was almost avoiding blanking the, the last minute. But because we are fishing so such a difficult condition, really long range with all the weed, all the, all the all around the lake is uh, he lost the fish so uh, me and Rick we especially Rick, have been doing quite good uh, in this area uh, Tony had some more problem because he was really fishing in a, in a difficult swim but uh, yeah all in all we did our best definitely yeah so we can do it, it? So we can do it. yeah it's been difficult for me I've lost a couple of fish in the weed um, <coughs> but it's like we've got another night yet and um, not gonna give up until the last minute no, never. So fingers crossed. Oh yeah, that's all we can do. Really. It does, yeah. I mean, look, it's it's one of those one of those things. You know, you can bring everything with you, all the gear that you need, but you never know what you ever actually need until you visit the lake. And we arrived here, you know, with basically sole purpose to be testing the new gear. Yeah. yeah. And by God, oh, this week has it had a test. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, it has in the conditions that we're fishing. Um, it ain't for the faint hearted to be fair. No, definitely not. It ain't, I mean, the, the hooks, uh, the new XC series hooks that we've been testing, basically no one's opened a hook out this no, week. No, no, been brilliant. You know, um, and, and everything has basically gone to the extremes this week. You know, it has been unfortunate that some of the guys that um, who have been in here with our group this week, they've not had but so many runs, you know, and uh, some of us have, but uh, that is fishing. That is fishing, yeah. you know, and it's not through how to try and. These guys have worked the, worked the backs right, off yeah. to try and get we, to get a yeah. bite this week. Mm -hmm. We could have been we could have been fishing a easier water. Gotcha. That would have been uh, also a chance, but uh, we decided to do some proper. Uh, I mean, let's let's say we have decided to complicate our life for yeah. this week <laughs> yeah. a little bit. But it's been a good test. I mean, uh, a good experience. No, I've deal. enjoyed it. Yeah. I've enjoyed it. I said, yeah, it's been difficult. Um, I played around with the little comrades as well and had a bit of um, light fun. Like, fun with <laughs> that, that. Fun. Um, on the on the little lake. That was really good fun. Enjoyed that. Got a smile back on my face. But uh, yeah, yeah, well, we say I've tried again today. So fingers crossed for tonight. Yeah. There's uh, something will come along. Something like 15 hours left, and then yeah. we see what happens, and then we see tomorrow morning. The clock's ticking. Yep. There's no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> right, see you tomorrow morning. Yeah. Cheers.
Okay, so uh, here we are finally at the end of the week. And it's, uh, it's been a good week to be fair. It's been a very trying week. You know, um, the fishing has been on and off, but um, as friends, as uh, work colleagues, we've had a very, very productive week. Testing some of the new last meter gear, yeah. the new rods, the new alarms, the new rod pods. So it's, I would say, yeah, fishing's been slow, but a very productive week. Yeah. Yeah, on, uh, on that way it has been an absolutely fantastic week. As we said previously, we, we've been also fishing a pretty, pretty hard environment. Yeah. This lake full of weed and everything. We managed anyway to land some good fish. It has been hard uh, for some of us especially. But uh, yeah, I mean we were here mostly to test and try the new gear and uh, we did it in the yeah, best way yeah, possible. Yeah, I think. No, the rods, yeah. the new C3 rods, the COM rods, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Great company. Good. And uh, yeah, it's been good. I've, um, I'll have to come back and uh, I've got a score to settle with this yeah. place. Yeah, you have. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> good, yeah, no, so. It's been really good, really yeah. enjoyable. Thanks very much, guys. I'm yeah, really no, it's been, a, it's it's been a pleasure to fish with yeah. all of you guys. So. Brilliant. And, and, and to be fair, that's the moral of every catfishing story, to be fair. You know, you spend the time on the, on the bank in a beautiful environment. Sometimes it's not just about catching, it's about the company that you're with. You know, and we've had a cracking time. You know, there not been many fish, but uh, the fish that we've had, we've shared and we're good friends. Yeah. And a yeah. week to remember for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. So, and we thank hope you enjoyed the same as yeah. we did. And thank you, Salva. <laughs> See you to the next one. Yeah. Ciao. Bye-bye.